What's going on YouTube? Football Rob coming at you with another NBA playoff video. And this video will be talking about the Game 4 preview. New York Knicks and Indiana Pacers. And the Knicks are in a 2-1 series deficit. And if they lose tonight, the odds of coming back are slim to none. So, you don't want to go down 3-1 and... Uh, I'll just break down what I think are the keys to the Knicks trying to pull this one out. Uh, you know, there are a lot of things that I've been saying about Carmelo Anthony that a lot of you haven't liked and a lot of thumbs down on these on these videos, but you know, it, it these are the these are the things that led me to believe that the Knicks right now are sinking ship. But I won't even go into Carmelo Anthony first. I'm going to there, there are other issues you know, a team is not just one player, and I get that. So, you know, a lot of different things are happening that that are the reasons why the Knicks are uh, where they are down 2-1 against the Indiana Pacers, who they have home court advantage against. So you should, you should be able to beat this team in a seven-game series since you were the better team all season long. The first thing that I'll talk about is J.R. Smith. You know, this guy is shooting 26% from the field in the first three games of this series. And that's atrocious. That's completely atrocious. Um, you know, he, he just brings nothing to the table if he's not scoring. If the shot's not going down, he brings absolutely nothing to your basketball team. He's like John Starks with tattoos. That's what he is. If he's hot, then he's he, he looks like an all-star. If he can't shoot... He's completely useless. He doesn't rebound particularly well. He doesn't defend. He's not a facilitator. He doesn't get others involved. He doesn't make the players around him better. He does absolutely nothing except score points. And when he can't, like when those one-dimensional players like that, when that one dimension isn't working, they they might as well just sit on the bench. So that's 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 a big problem because he's the second leading scorer on the team. So. That's an issue. And the other thing that I'm seeing in this series, I mean, the Nick big men cannot shoot the ball. Kenyon Martin is not a threat to shoot. Tyson Channel not a threat to shoot. That's nothing new. But in this matchup against this team, the Indiana Pacers, that's a big issue. Because Roy Hibbert, seven foot all seven foot two, two hundred and eighty pounds of him. Because none of the big men on the Knicks can do anything outside of the paint. He can just sit there and wait for Carmelo Anthony to drive the lane. He, he doesn't have to, oh, I got I to gotta chase Kenyon Martin out to the, out to the elbow. I got to chase uh, you know, Tyson Chandler. He might do a pick and pop. You don't have any of those kinds of threats. So Roy Hibbert could just sit there and wait and go like this. And Carmelo Anthony's going to run right into him because you know the guy never passes the ball. So, so when Carmelo drives, seven foot two Roy Hibbert's just going to stand there like this, and maybe he'll deflect the shot, maybe he won't. But the point is that's a low percentage shot. And what Carmelo Anthony is known to do, he's known to just flail himself into people. And hope that the referees bail him out. And when he doesn't get his way, when they don't call a foul on Roy Hibbert, then he just complains and sulks and doesn't get back on defense. Meanwhile, the Pacers are going the other way. So it's all those kinds of, it's like a perfect storm of bad things to happen. And that's why the Knicks are where they are. And I think something that could solve this problem, two things. Amari Stoudemire needs to be a factor in Game 4. He needs... He can't, he can't play like 10 minutes and give you four points. That's, no, he has, to play, he has to play at least 25, 30 minutes, and he needs to give you 15 to 20 points, and he also needs to hit from the elbow or beyond because he's known when he's healthy to do it. And I know it's asking a lot because he's missed about two months of action, but he needs to hit those shots to get Roy Hibbert out of the paint. That's the only chance the Knicks have of getting Roy Hibbert out of the paint so Melo can drive the lane. And then also, Melo has to move the ball. You have to move the ball. I mean, if, if, if you play isolation one-on-one -on -one basketball, that is, that is that plays right into the Pacers' hands because they have help 
that they will rotate and cheat over to you because there there is no other th offensive threat. Kenyon Martin is not an offensive threat. Tyson Chandler not an offensive threat. They could just cheat over to you, and they can dictate what kind of shot you take, Carmelo Anthony. You have to move the ball. And another couple of problems that I'm noticing. Tyson Chandler on defense. I mean, this guy just doesn't know how to play defense with fouls. When he's in foul trouble, it's like... He plays with his tail between his legs. He's scared to play defense. When he's not in foul trouble, then he's aggressive and he's a very good defender, and that's why he won Defensive Player of the Year. Shout out to Cool Dave, by the way, who, who saw this coming last week. But when Tyson Chandler is, with, is in foul trouble, he's completely ineffective on defense, and Roy Hibbert is taking advantage. So you have to you have to learn how to play if you if you have two fouls in the first eight minutes of the game or you have three fouls in the first half or you have four fouls with six minutes to go in the third quarter you have to still play defense you can't just let people score and the last thing I've noticed about the Knicks where the hell is Jason Kidd he in this whole playoff this whole playoff season on nine games in the playoffs so far, six against the Boston Celtics, three against the Indiana Pacers. He's got a grand total of three field goals made in nine games. He hasn't scored a field goal since game two against Boston last month. That's ridiculous. You know, I mean, I don't expect Jason Kidd to score 27 points a game, but could you score seven? Jesus. You know? Just unbelievable. So... You know, all these things lead me to believe the Knicks will probably lose this game tonight, especially now that Iman Shumpert's knee is acting up and he was a consistent player. And, uh, you know, Raymond Felton is coming off a bad game in Game 3, 1 for 8 from the field. But other than that, he's been very consistent. So I think that's just an aberration. But there's a lot of things that I'm starting to see that this spells certain doom for the Knicks. I'm thinking they're going to lose... Game four, but I'll give them the benefit of the, of the doubt, and I'll just say that they're going to win. But I, I, I am not confident in that pick at all, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Knicks are down 3-1. So football, Rob, let's get the dialogue going. What do you think about the Knicks? Comment, subscribe, you know, give some feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. It's football, Rob, signing off.